going to do is we're going to be tying one of my favorite bass flies for spring, the crawl fodder. And it's a based originally on uh, Crawdad Rindu's uh, Harry fodder. And you've already got a tutorial up on that on how you can tie that one. Uh, it's different from the original, but it's the way I found that works really well for me. And today what we're doing is this guy. He's a pretty good sized fly, big old nasty creature. A lot of colors, a lot of olive varying in it. And what we looked at it for it, I wanted the rust, I wanted the olive, because down here in a lot of our rivers you will get that olive color. Um, it's made out of mostly zonker strips, so it will be tough to cast uh, once it gets fully saturated. So you're probably going to want to do a 7 or 8 weight on it. You can do it with 6 if you're a skilled caster. Uh, Belgian loops are going to have to be your thing, but the reason it is tied in the particular materials it is is because when it sits down, it's going to sit up with these claws sitting up just right and it just breathes in the water. And a lot of times in the spring, that bass is going to sit there and it's going to stare that crawfish down before it takes a big old bite out of it. And so we've got a little bit bigger hook, we've got a B10S size 2, so when he does get a bite on it, he gets a mouthful of hook. So sit around, grab yourself something to drink, whoop your vice out, let's do some time. We're going to do this, this is probably the most requested pattern we've ever had, it's the crawl fodder. Alright, we're going to start with the size 2, Gamakatsu B10S hook. I'm going to do a nice even thread wrap, all the way forwards and back. And then, we're going to go ahead and trim that off. Um, Alright, then we're going to add some nice big extra large pseudo eyes. And these are pretty cool. These have got, you know, they're black. They've got some color in them. We're going to leave a little bit of a gap from the eye of the hook because we may decide to tie in a weed guard. We don't want to leave a huge gap, but just a little one will do, trust me. Alright. Secure it, check for any twist, uh, just a hair. So go back over it again. That's what I like about this clear nylon thread I use. It allows me to really put a good number of wraps in. I'm going to go ahead and do some loon, hard head. I use loon because it's non toxic and I've got a bunch of small children running around my house. I'm sure a lot of folks watching also have small people, they're endemic. It's weird they just pop up out of nowhere. Alright, now that we got that on, the first thing we're going to tie on is going to be some orange and black barred silicone legs. Pick these up from anywhere. I'm going to have about, I'd say probably about three right here. I'm going to tie them in. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the simplest thing ever. I'm just going to double them over like so. Come back a little ways. Tie this in. Boom. It's got a pretty good flair to it. Nothing terribly special. But it will certainly do the trick. Alright. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some barred zonker. Olive variant. And what this is going to do for me is I just want to get just a little bit, maybe about this much. And I'm going to cut it. Now the good trick when you're using zonker is a little bit of spit. It goes a long way. Parts the hairs so you're not just wasting zonker. We're going to cut this out. Boom. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing over here again wherever we meet up in the middle. Boom. Do the same thing again. Well, this bit goes a long way. Alright, and 
trim it off. All right, perfect. All right, now we've got that in. To add a little bit of flair to it, I'm going to take some orange Palmer chenille. Just a little bit. This is the medium. Maybe two inches worth. Inch and a half. Inch and a quarter. Not too much. Right, I'm going to bring it down. And then I'm going to grab hold to the old hackle pliers. There we are. And we're going to do a few twists. There we are. Keep on coming. What I like about this material here is you don't have to do a whole lot to keep it in line. It's kind of takes all the work out of it for you which I'm a big fan of there we are and right. yeah, we'll finish it up Trim it off. Boom. Just let it fall. Drop it. I drop it in the microphone. Boom. Drop them beats. All right, cool beans. Now let's go ahead and get the hook up with that olive zonker. I'm gonna tie it with the hair facing outwards. And go back. Just be aware that it will try to twist with you. Not a big deal. If you take it into account, you'll be alright. So there's one side. And we're going to match it up with the other side. Now, if you got this, you see how I just cut this? So I've got this here. You just pull just a wee bit. A couple nice loose wraps. Boom. It's all over but the crying. Now we just want to tighten it in. Good thing once again about this clear nylon thread. We get a lot of, a lot of thread wraps in. Alright, next thing. We're going to do some rust cross cut zonker. You can do it barred if you like. I don't know that it makes a hill of beans a difference. We're actually going to do a pretty decent amount of it. Yeah, one trick with Zonker, you have to remember this, when you're twisting it on there, it's going to have a natural tendency to want to go one way or the other. See like this one right here? This one to go forward, no matter which way I do it. So what I'm going to do, to kind of counteract this, I'm just going to take it, untie it, and we're going to tie it in upside down. Just like your granddaddy said, be smarter than what you're working with. Boom. I'm on it, doggone it. Alright, let's keep on rocking. Alright. Once again, a little spit goes a long way. It's a dapper dan, man. So we're getting a nice really nice looking fly. Now, do keep in mind as this is you know, a fly that's filled with hair and weight it is going to be a pain in the butt to cast and this is going to you know, as long as you're keeping that in mind when you're casting it and you're not expecting it to be something that's not, you'll be alright. Beautiful. What I like about this is we're almost able to come all the way down to the end. Nice and tight. Boom. 
All right, now the next step we're going to go with, we're going to go with yellow and gold and black and the silly leg and barred. And once again, we're probably going to do about three to each side. And they come in big old things like this. So just grab one, two, three out. Pull, pull. Perfect. We're on it, dog on it. Alright. I'm just going to throw it over the top of those eyes. So, a couple more wraps and it's all over. It's all over but the crying now. Alright, perfect. Now we're going to come back in with just a little bit more olive. As you can tell, we only need about two wraps. So, no use in getting too excited about it. Just trim off what you need. You're good to go. And we'll tie it right on in. And you can kind of hold on to uh, the pieces that you pull off as you're going to kind of hold on to it to make dubbing later on. Alright, so once again, we're going to run into the same thing. So we're going to come off of it, tie it in upside down. And you want to just kind of separate this up, just like I did earlier. Nice and easy. Alright. Now I'll show you one little trick I like to keep from cutting my thread. I'm just going to set that to the back, back there. Just a little bit. Now, at this point, there's a couple options you've got. You can either leave it like this where you've got kind of that olive orange olive. I actually like to go back in now with a little bit of orange. Just for the contrast as I'm coming back. Now, if you want to, there's a new material. Well, it's not new by a long shot, but new to me for this particular fly. That I have really liked, and it is an EP flash brush. So I only want a couple, maybe a twist or two, just enough to give it a nice little color. I'm not, I don't want a whole lot of saturation in this color. Alright. Take one twist. And I'm telling you this almost, this may be all I want, and it is. Perfect. I'll straighten everybody out, make sure everybody's in order. Like so. Couple more little twists. Make sure I'm not trapping too many fibers. And then find you an old pair of scissors you're not too terribly concerned with. Go back in there, same little deal, put that thread back behind you. Boom. Pull the excess out. Alright, let's get 
get that trimmed off. Like I said, don't do it with scissors. You like these are some old cheap scissors that I bought at Walmart for like a dollar, and I use it for the ugly work. All right, so now we got a pretty sharp looking fly, and what we really want to do next, I'm gonna bring this around just a hair. Right. Now the next thing we can do is we can add a little bit of a weed guard. And to do that, we're going to rotate the fly over, like so. Tilt the camera down just a wee bit. There we are. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Get that hooks and all that fur. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some uh, 25 pound test. Excuse me, I'll tell you what, on this one we'll do 50. Alright, now yeah, we'll take this. I want to come just barely if you can see me. Pull this down so you can see the hook. There we are. See that hook in there? Alright, so I'm gonna do it and pull it down until just barely it doesn't reach it. I'm bring both these loops over. Tie it in nice and tight. I'm check and make sure it's done touching. It's not, but I tell you what I would like, I would like it to be a little bit closer. So I'm gonna come in here. Just pull up just slightly. Alright, so now, make sure we're not trapping up any fibers, whether it's an EP fiber, or some of that good rabbit. Make sure we don't do a job. Now, if you notice, we're bringing the thread right behind this loop. Okay? We're going to do it over and over again until it eventually stands up. stand up a little bit not not too much so I would say that's probably good enough and from there I'm just gonna go ahead and tie it off if you want to stand up a little bit better I'll tell you a neat trick is gonna be to use a little bit of loon in the UV cure and just make that sucker stand up just be careful it's on a fallen fly like this when you've got it you know and a bass takes it it can be you know in of itself difficult to detect a stri uh, strike because they'll hit it on the fall when the line is slack and the stiffer you make that weed guard the tougher it's going to be and I'm throwing this sucker into, into heavy cover too so alright perfect there we go Now we're just going to trim it off. Easy peasy. I've got a friend of mine who's a wonderful fly fisherman and fly tire. He's a surgeon around here. And he hooks me up with these. They're, uh, these are for cauterizing. I use it for clearing. Heavy mono. They really are wonderful. And if any of y'all know a doctor that's willing to share that wells with you, just say not. You know, tell them if they if they run across any of them, you like to have them. They're really nice. All right, so now we got that on. 
we're going to loon it up and then we'll trim it. Alright guys, here we are all trimmed up. Got some good claw features. Some clawtography. Crawfire. She's big, she's bad, she's heavy. She's probably only eight weight friendly. She's angry at the world. She's got a good bounce. If you want to, you could have tied in a rattle and uh, go from there. But uh, for your pre spawn bass routine this year, give her a go. She's delicious. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, the crawl fodder is an easy pattern to tie. It does take some time. There's only about three or four basic materials. Pretty simple. And I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope it leads to some good fishing for you. Uh, you don't have to do pseudo eyes. Plain lead works just fine. Actually, a little bit better if you can get away with that in your river system simply because it gets that fly on down there. Or if you can find tungsten uh, dumbbell eyes. That's really the trick. That's that's the real ticket there. But um, hope you all enjoyed the fly. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, click the subscribe button. Feel free to share it on wherever you like. And uh, we'll see you later.